Hello and welcome to this service on the third Sunday of Easter, which is coming to you from the homes of our church family. It's wonderful that we can come together this morning, even if it is by virtue of a computer screen, but God knows we're gathered. And I hope and pray that wherever you are, you can feel the strength of the Holy Spirit in your home, in your body, and in your very being. Dearest Lord, we ask that you send your Holy Spirit to wherever we are to be with us as we lean into you this morning. Amen. As we start, let us light a candle. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Yesterday was St Mark's Day, the 25th of April. And as we're St Mark's Church, he's our patron saint. We're dedicated to St Mark. And we celebrate this fact by having what we call a patronal festival either on the 25th or on the Sunday closest, which is today. But why is that important to us? This saint that lived so long ago, who was St Mark? Well, St Mark was an evangelist. That's someone who goes out to deliberately share the good news of Jesus and is believed to have founded the church in Egypt, which would have encouraged and enabled anyone who had come to faith to gather together with others to worship and glorify God. But as one of the first Christians traveling at the time of Paul and Barnabas, sharing Jesus at this extremely hostile time wouldn't have been an easy job. In fact, we know that Paul was imprisoned and persecuted for doing exactly the same thing. But here we are all these years later, looking back and celebrating a man that stood up and stood out for his faith. Today we've got freedoms, despite this lockdown, that Mark could only have dreamed of. No one's going to throw us into prison for sharing the great things that Jesus has for us. But do we take the opportunity to be an evangelist? To talk about our faith, to share our faith? Can we even hope to begin to do some of the things that Mark did? Let's share our special prayer for this day. Almighty God, who enlightened your holy church through the inspired witness of your evangelist, St. Mark, grant that we, being firmly grounded in the truth of the gospel, may be faithful to its teaching, both in word and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's continue our worship by singing I Love to Tell, which reminds us of all the great stuff that Mark told everyone about, the love and the glory of our wonderful Saviour, Jesus Christ. Could do. 
The reading is taken from Mark, chapter 4, verses 1 to 20. Again, Jesus began to teach beside Lake Galilee. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and sat in it. The boat was out in the water, and the crowd stood on the shore at the water's edge. He used parables to teach them many things, saying to them, Listen, once there was a man who went out to sow grain, as he scattered the seed in the field, some of it fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some of it fell on rocky ground, where there was little soil. The seed soon sprouted, because the soil wasn't deep. Then, when the sun came up, it burned the young plants. Because the roots had not grown deep enough, the plants soon dried up. Some of the seed fell among thorn bushes, which grew up and choked the plants, and they didn't bear grain. Some of the seeds fell in good soil, and the plants sprouted, grew, and bore grain. Some had thirty grains, others sixty, and others one hundred. And Jesus concluded, Listen then, if you have ears. When Jesus was alone, some of those who had heard him came to him with the twelve disciples and asked him to explain the parables. You have been given the secret of the kingdom of God, Jesus answered. But the others who are on the outside, hear all things by means of parables, so that they may look and look, yet not see. They may listen and listen, yet not understand. For if they did, they would turn to God, and he would forgive them. Then Jesus asked them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you ever understand any parable? The sower sows God's message. Some people are like the seeds that fall along the path. As soon as they hear the message, Satan comes and takes it away. Other people are like the seeds that fall on rocky ground. As soon as they hear the message, they receive it gladly. But it does not seek, sink deep into them, and they don't last long. So when trouble or persecution comes because of the message, they give up at once. Other people are like the seeds sown among the thorn bushes. These are the ones who hear the message, but the worries about this life, the love for riches and all other kinds of desires crowd in and choke the message and they don't bear fruit. But other people are like seeds grown in good soil. They hear the message, accept it and bear fruit, some 30, some 60 and some 100. This is the word of God. Let us pray. Father God and our Lord Jesus Christ, come to us wherever we are. Come to us by your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your word, which shapes and energizes us in our worship. And as we worship today, we pray that our hearts may be open and our attitudes humble to receive your word. Amen. Well, today we are looking in this section of the service of Holy Communion at the Word, which is a reading, a sermon, and then the Creed. We shall start, I shall start with the Word. So, why is the Word included? In the communion service. It's not there as a test to see who can read it publicly and pronounce all those words we've not heard of without making any mistakes. But it is there so that the word is written to be read in church at this section and is there to prepare us, to take us into the Eucharist and Holy Communion. So preparing, it prepares before we receive bread and wine. 
because what we do is serious and sacred. Two, the word of God in the service is for the congregation, the gathered congregation. It has a reconciliation power. So why do we need to do this? Well, Jesus died to reconcile us to himself and to each other. Those who are Christ's disciples must not harbour any ill feeling towards another disciple or a sister or brother in the congregation. It is so easy to be misinterpreted or for us to misinterpret others. Someone's words and actions Maybe we feel left out, or maybe we have a gripe at the vicar who has changed everything again. That is sad. But C.S. Lewis, well known author, wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters. It was about a church congregation who was bothered by a senior devil charged by his master below to create havoc within a congregation by playing their weaknesses one against the other to split the church this devil was very subtle and wily as he worked well i read this book when i first became a christian even though in places it was humorous, it was also very serious as it hit every congregation, no matter what denomination, wherever and whoever they were. Parable of the Sower is not only about sowing seed, it's about preparation of the soil. It's about being able to grow. And in this world, when we get tempted, when the devil comes to us, when he's very wily, we need to have a depth of soil that will give us the foundation that we need as Christians. As we listen to that passage, one of the things that hit me was the bit that Jesus discussed it with his disciples. Now, Jesus was very stern towards the religious leaders, in particular, as they deliberately refused to acknowledge him as son of God. And his teachings and healings were looked at suspiciously, always with the intent to trip him up and take him off the streets. Jesus was meddling with their jurisdiction of teaching the law and they tried to stop and prevent him. Jesus told his disciples that the secret of the kingdom of God had been given to them. But those outside were taught by parables so that they be ever seeing but not perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Those who were outside were the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the temple priests who would not accept Jesus. Well, these words were also spoken by God to the prophet Isaiah. He had warned his people, the Israelites, of their behavior so many times that those who wouldn't change their ways were lost. 
God is holy and his holiness is something we cannot tamper with and his word demands attention and we must not shirk. The word is also a time to perceive what action we need to take before we come to the Lord's table to take communion, which is a holy act. It is good to hear the spoken word, bringing truth and light to the congregation. If there is anything fresh we haven't perceived in our personal lives before, or in our corporate life. Behavior that is not acceptable to God, then we must come to the altar in humility and sorrow. Then his blood cleanses us, the power of his blood, and we can know his grace and forgiveness. Matthew talks about sin that is within us and causes friction in a congregation and jesus said if you have anything against your brother and sister in church you must put it right before coming to the altar to receive so the words holy communion means that we are in union with each other to receive the holy things of bread and wine. Now, just in case we think we can sit lightly to the Word of God, the writer of Hebrews in the New Testament describes the Word of God as being alive and active and sharper than any two edged sword which penetrates to dividing the soul and the spirit, joints and marrow. Nothing in creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. So in the parable, the soil is us and the seed is the word of God. Each one of us is the soil, corporate. And different soils represent different ways people respond to the word of God. Or church Christian growth. Even staunch Christians can allow God's word into some areas of lives and not others. Do you know we can be open to our future for God's guidance? but be closed to how we spend our money or enter into ungodly relationships. We may love worship, but where our money is concerned, we are like Scrooge. Jesus tells us that the worries of this life, the seduction of wealth, the get-rich-quick investments, not only become a daily focus, but also a snare. Because our focus is too much on money and less on God. And lost money could have been better spent. James, the disciple of Jesus, writes after Jesus had ascended into heaven to the new churches who profess to have faith because of hearing the word of God. Yet we are not doers. So he was questioning, what is the use of faith only? You know, our faith that we actually receive from the word of God, but we don't put into action. How can that increase our faith or develop our faith further? Or we have those who want to be doers, joining with different sects and want to do without wanting to listen. 
no depth of soil. So our soil has to grow and be deep so God's word can grow within us. Now I'm going to leave us with a serious question so I can go on to the creed. What is it that hinders us as a church from doing what we hear God, we hear God saying to us? So what is it? What is it that we're not doing what God is saying to us? I'm going to turn my attention now to the creed. Every society or group has to set out a statement of belief and intention. Well, I can think of brownies and guides, cubs and scouts, where we vow to do our duty to queen and country. And no doubt, many of you can think of many more. One of the earliest creedal statements in the early church was Jesus is Lord, which they would hold on to despite all persecution. Those who were arrested and those who tried them would write Jesus is Lord on the ground and ask the believers to spit on it or stamp it out. But actually by saying Jesus is Lord, gave them strength to hold on. Some, of course, were killed. Well, looking at the creed as we have it today, in its simplest form, it is declaring our faith in the Holy Trinity. Each section we recite is about the very essence of God and how Jesus, his son, was born, died, rose again, and the Holy Spirit, who brings truth to the church, which unites Christians in every generation, tribe, and tongue. It emphasizes the very essence of the Christian faith and belief. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit brings together and unifies the whole service, that's what it's all about, the word and the creed, unified in the body and the blood of Christ. The Apostles' Creed, which was, it came about in the early church in the year, years 120 to 250, um, was the earliest. Then we have the Nicene Creed, which is was two sittings by the bishops at 325 year and year 381 AD. Why were these creeds so necessary? Well, it was because way back in the early church, the Arians mocked the Christian faith made Christians inferior and emphasized Aryan their superior superior oh dear, their Aryan superiority as their belief was called Gnosticism that is secret knowledge. But we know that there is no secret knowledge that Jesus Christ has made all the knowledge of God his Father to us, he has given it to us in his word. The bishops from all over the world came together to take counsel against this heresy, the Arian heresy, which caused much confusion. But because it looked down on the Christian faith, it made the cross and resurrection folly because the Arians would not recognize Jesus as being divine, only human. And so we have to recognize this as the work of the Antichrist, the devil. 
Therefore, the bishops were fighting against Satan's subtle wiles and attack on Christians. And that is why the creed is formulated adhering to scripture. Jesus had alluded to such heresies when he's taught his disciples that the wiles of the devil would take even the elect captive. I would like to finish with a reading from St. From the Epistle of John. And it is chapter 4. And here is writing John was himself, himself a disciple of Jesus. He lived with Jesus, he heard Jesus teach and preach, he watched him perform miracles, he saw him at the tomb of Lazarus, he saw Jesus weep with those who were weeping with grief for the loss of Lazarus. But he saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. And therefore, when Jesus died, was crucified, and put in a tomb, and rose again, John witnessed all of this. And this is what he's saying to the early church. He knows what is right and he knows the gospel and this is what is imparted to them but they have to test the spirits dear friends do not believe every spirit but test the spirits to see whether they are from god because many false prophets have gone out into the world this is how you can recognize the spirit of god every spirit that acknowledges that jesus christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So the word of God and the creed has its special part in the church service of Holy Communion and all the Eucharist, however we perceive it. And it makes us strong and we are able to recognize Satan's attack. We also recognize how Satan mocks the crucifixion. The very essence of communion which we take at the altar of God. That which is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which has the power to raise us from death, now and in the future. Amen. We come together now for a time of prayer. If you wish, you may change your position, put your hands together, kneel, sit, lean forward. But just wherever you are and however you are, lean into the presence of Christ. God, our good Father, we give thanks to you for your word, the bread of life. We pray that you would help us to be good soil, that hears it, receives it and responds to it. Protect us, we pray, from all works of the enemy. Keep him from snatching away the seed of your word. Keep us from being soil that is easily distracted and smothered by the cares of this world or the preoccupations of this life. But make us soil that bears fruit many times what we received. 
let us be those who receive, take in, understand, love and share your good word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving Father, we pray for our world, which is your world. We pray for the defeat of COVID-19, that this virus would pass. We pray for cooperation among the families of the nations, that they would unite against a common foe. And we pray for the right lessons to be learned, that we would build a new world that is all the better for passing through this dark valley. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who struggle with isolation at the moment, those who are lonely, those who are anxious, those who are in difficult relationships. We pray for all who feel cut off from the world or abandoned by society, and we pray that they would know they are not cut off from you, and that nothing can separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our nation. We pray that you would give wisdom to the government as it seeks to run the country through the present crisis. Help them to know, we pray, how best to fight the disease and how and when to lift restrictions and lockdown. Give them patience and wisdom as they seek to keep all the rest of our common life running at this difficult time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for your church, and we pray that you would help it to show spiritual leadership, that you would help us in the face of this reminder of the fragility of mortal life, to hold forth the hope of eternal life, secure and unshakable. When all seems dark, Lord, help us to point to the light of the world, In your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Saviour, we pray for ourselves. And we pray that as churches are closed, we would grow in our personal faith with you. That you would help each of us to walk through the weeks ahead, side by side with you. We pray that you would be our light, our guide and our companion. We pray that we would know your presence beside us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for our hearts that our hearts would be truly set on you. Fill our hearts, we pray, with your kingdom, your goodness and your love. Lift up our eyes to hope in the day when you shall come again and all things be made new in you. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed for us. Let us therefore rejoice by putting away all malice and evil, 
and confessing our sins with a sincere and true heart. Lord Jesus, you wept over the sins of your city. On our city, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you heal the wounds of sin and division, jealousy and bitterness. On us, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Grant us peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring you his pardon and peace now and for ever. Amen. As we are gathered in spirit, regardless of time and space, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We praise you and bless you, holy and gracious God, source of life abundant. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy at all times and in all places to give you thanks and praise, Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. And now we give you thanks because, after his most glorious resurrection, he appeared to his disciples and in their sight ascended into heaven to prepare a place for us, that where he is, thither we might also ascend and reign with him in glory. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, for ever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself, made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, we look for the coming of your kingdom, and with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ your Son, our Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord, Lord by, by your cross and, and resurrection, resurrection, you have set us free. You are the Saviour of the world. world. Accept through him, our great High Priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts in the presence of your Divine Majesty, renew us by your Spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, in worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise, blessing, blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. As we are gathered in spirit, regardless of time and space, we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. I invite you to take your bread. The body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for me. Amen. Amen. I invite you to take your wine. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood of Christ shed for me. Amen. Amen. God of abundance, as we are gathered in spirit, regardless of time and space, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Saviour. Amen. Amen. May God, who works miracles in our lives, fill us with his Spirit and change us day by day to reflect his glory until that day when we see him face to face. May the Almighty and merciful Lord, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless us and keep us. Amen. <laughs>